Donald Trump is coming under increased pressure over allegations that Russia interfered in the presidential election. It's been announced that the man investigating the claims has convened a grand jury to weigh up the evidence. The move suggests that Robert Mueller, former head of the FBI, may be taking a more aggressive approach to gathering evidence on possible Russian collusion with Donald Trump's campaign team. Grand juries can issue subpoenas to compel people to testify. But the president has again pulled scorn on the inquiry, telling a rally in West Virginia it was a total fabrication. Tom Burridge reports. In West Virginia last night, it felt like the president was still fighting an election. But he and his very loyal supporters are battling allegations that his campaign in last November's election colluded with Russia. Now, with a grand jury up and running, the investigation is into a new phase. And the president, as always, is in fighting form. The Russia story is a total fabrication. It's just an excuse for the greatest loss in the history of American politics. That's all it is. The grand jury is meeting to consider evidence behind closed doors in this building. It's a panel of American citizens. Their job isn't to determine guilt or innocence. They can call witnesses to testify or demand to see documents. And they must decide if the evidence that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia is strong enough for a criminal trial. The decision to call a grand jury was made by this man, former FBI boss Robert Mueller. Mr. Mueller, are you investigating the president? The move is a logical next step in his investigation into the Trump campaign. But it shows the evidence gathered so far merits a thorough investigation. But the whole affair is a rallying cry for President Trump's core support. His supporters are not put off by all that's uh, happened in Washington. Rather, they've been uh, galvanized by it. Uh, the uh, constant drumbeat of uh, opposition from the media and the, uh, uh, the um, uh, resistance, uh, uh, as they call it, of the Democrats in Congress. According to the US media, the grand jury already wants information about a meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and a Russian lawyer in June of last year. Donald Trump Jr. has admitted he was promised damaging material about his dad's opponent, Hillary Clinton, but he says he got none. The White House said it supported any action that would accelerate the conclusion of the investigation fairly. Today, the president is off on holiday to play golf. The US media is unlikely to take time off from talking about what went on before he was elected. Tom Burridge, BBC News. We can speak to Scott Lucas, Professor of American Politics at the University of Birmingham. Professor Lucas, welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. Just explain, if you would, the process and purpose of a grand jury. So a grand jury uh, is a panel between 16 and 23 people that are brought to assess whether there's enough evidence to go to trial. In other words, whether there's enough evidence to indict, in this case, for example, associates of Donald Trump, if not the president himself. They do not issue a guilty or innocent verdict. All they make that decision on is that the evidence is there, the next step should be taken, or alternatively, there's not enough which has been gathered by the special counsel and the inquiry can be halted. To go to the trouble, though, of assembling a grand jury, and it, it has to be held in secret, of course, as well, uh, what does that lead you to think that the, the prosecutors suspect about the strength of the case? Oh, I think this is serious for a couple of reasons. First of all, this grand jury we found out, although we only discovered it yesterday, has been impaneled, impaneled for weeks. So in other words, they have already been provided with some evidence. They've already been asked to issue some subpoenas. Secondly, Robert Mueller is a former FBI director for 12 years. He's a very tough lawyer. He would not swing at the king, so to speak, if he did not think he was well prepared. So I think they have significant evidence on at least three different lines of inquiry Although, of course, we won't know about this publicly and formally because this will be within closed session where it is presented. When have grand juries proved to be uh, pivotal in the, the, the beginnings of a case in the past in American politics? I think the, the closest parallel I think we have is probably the Watergate scandal of the 1970s and the downfall of Richard Nixon. In March of 1974, after hearing months 
of evidence after the subpoena of witnesses, as would happen in this case, uh, a grand jury brought indictments against seven of Nixon's top aides, including his chief of staff, H.R. Haldeman. They also wanted to indict Nixon, but the prosecutor said, well, you can't do that because he's still president. So instead, he was named as an unindicted co-conspirator. He tried to hold on politically, but this was the beginning of the end, and he had to resign in August. Whether the same happens with Donald Trump, well, that's the huge question we're about to uh, find out the answer to, although it may take some time. He has pulled scorn on the total idea of the grand jury in the investigation, though, hasn't he? Saying to that rally in West Virginia, it's a total fabrication. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Let's be clear about the three lines of inquiry, just to show how serious this is. First, there are confirmed meetings between Trump associates, including his son Donald Jr., son-in-law Jared Kushner, campaign manager, former national security advisor, with Russian officials. We know that National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who had to leave the post in February, has been subpoenaed because of his meetings with the Russian ambassador. Second, financial links. There has been an investigation for since summer 2016 by the FBI of whether the Russians have put money into the accounts of Trump associates or into the Trump campaign itself. Robert Mueller is investigating those possible financial links. Third, Trump himself has now been brought into this because of possible obstruction of justice in the firing of James Comey to try to halt the investigation in May, and then last week in the revelation that he dictated a misleading memo that tried to sweep away the June 2016 meeting between his son and the Kremlin-linked envoys. Other presidents have come under pressure, though, haven't they? Looked like they were going to face impeachment and... and emerged unscathed pretty much. So we're a long, long way, aren't we, for President Tr Trump's downfall, as his critics might be hoping for. Well, first, to, to take the obvious parallel you're drawing, Bill Clinton um, having relations with an intern in the 1990s is not as serious as the possible collusion with a foreign power to interfere in the election in which you claimed victory. Big difference in scale. As far as how long it will take, of course, it's not going to happen in the next few weeks. Donald Trump is not going to suddenly give up. But I think that the accumulation of evidence, as well as the paralysis of the White House, means that Republicans peel away from him. And by this time next year, August 2018, with midterm elections uh, closing in, I suspect Trump will be encouraged to resign to avoid impeachment. Well, we'll wait and see, won't we? It's exciting, interesting times all round. Professor Scott Lucas from the University of Birmingham, thank you. Thank you. Let's speak now to our North America correspondent, Regina Vaidyanathan. Regina, this has been going on for weeks, this grand jury. How did it finally come to light? Well, usually these matters are kept se uh, secret. So uh, clearly someone has leaked this information, which uh, seems to be the theme of uh, this administration, something that the president and others in the White House have railed against. Um, but uh, it is normally that these sort of proceedings are secret. So it's unlikely that we will find out uh, anything about uh, what sort of evidence they have gathered, who they might have called as witnesses, unless, of course, they decide to ultimately uh, press charges against anyone. Uh, we're just hearing via Reuters, uh, Regini, that the Kremlin is saying that it fully agrees with President Trump, who said in a Twitter message that Washington's relationship with Russia is at an all-time and very dangerous low. Uh, how will that be read by those involved in this investigation? Well, I mean, this all follows uh, a tricky week when it comes to U.S.-Russia relations. Now, uh, earlier in the week, uh, President Trump signed a bill which would increase sanctions against Russia. But he did so somewhat begrudgingly. He issued a statement after he'd signed that bill saying that it was a flawed bill and that it was unconstitutional. Um, in, a, in a way, he was backed into a corner by Congress, who voted overwhelmingly to increase sanctions against Russia. But uh, it also limits and restricts the president's ability to ease those sanctions in the future. So the president said it limits his foreign policy powers, and that's why he was very angry about it, but also because of the message that it sends to Russia, and that Russia is a country that the president hoped during the campaign that he could actually work with. Um, and uh, what we saw earlier in the week is the Russian prime minister, Dmitry Medvedev, saying that uh, relations between Russia would be uh, an all-out trade war. So uh, what we're hearing from the Kremlin just now that you say you're seeing on 
on Reuters is just the latest episode in what's been a very tumultuous week. Of course, just to remind you as well, last week Russia ordered the expulsion of uh, 755, I think, uh, diplomatic staff uh, working at the consulate in uh, the Russian uh, country as well. Regina, for the moment, thank you very much, Regina Vajinathan in Washington.